You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey, all right. I got my Harry's uh, stuff in the mail. I got a nice box with a razor, shaving gel, all kinds of goodies. Woo, it is good stuff. I love it. I'm shaving twice a day with this thing. I shave my legs and everything. Uh, it's just a beautiful razor, too. It's pretty. It's silver and nice and well-made. Made in Germany. Yeah. Oh, that's good. They know what they're doing over there. Now they do. They had a rough go in the 40s. Um, yeah, it's way better than my other razors. It looks good. I, I keep it right on the sink just in case a lady happens to walk by my bathroom. Uh, and, yeah, I love it. So um, just shaving sucks now because it's so expensive. Those razors, they're like millions of dollars. You got to go into the store and ask them for, does it fit on my head, all that? I got the, does that blade fit with my thing? I got a Mach 3, a Gillette, a Mach 4, uh, whatever. So, uh, yeah, this is great. They mail you the cartridges when you run out. You get some new ones in. It's way cheaper. Shaving is so expensive, but it doesn't have to be. God no. damn it. Harrys.com was started by two guys passionate about creating a better shaving experience for all. Great experiences, these guys. They got a lot of experiences. Their starter is just 15 bucks. That includes a razor, three blades, and your choice of Harry's shave cream or foaming shave gel. <laughs> I prefer the shaved gel myself. I like a cream. As an added bonus, you can get five bucks off your first purchase with a code. Tuesdays. Yeah. Our code. Tuesdays. Me and you. Tuesdays. That's harrys.com. H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com. Use coupon code Tuesdays. And we'll give you a five dollars off if you type in the code Tuesdays. If you type in Tuesdays, you get five dollars off Tuesdays. Not bad. Start the start shaving smarter today. You got that right, chap. All right, hit it. What happens now? Does the intro music come on now or after? Oh, okay. I have no idea where we're at. Leave that in as well. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Well, whatever. Music played. Who gives a shit? We're here, everybody. Hey. Joe List. That's Mark Norman. We're both mad and silly. And weird. We're getting Chipotle later. That'll pick us up. Yeah, we got some Chipotle gift cards last night. And, uh, boy, I'm all tops. I have... How are you at compartmentalizing? Ah, uh, it's my best skill. Yeah, you're pretty good at it. I can do it. Yeah. I, I was a bottler. I bottled everything as yeah. a kid. I bottled ketchup for a period up in Maine. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was a good gig. But uh, they wouldn't let us wear shoes. Ah, yeah, because of the glass. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. A couple broken bottles. We call it in my family. We call ketchup Irish marinara. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, there's a lot of ketchup in our family. Reminds me of that old Jim Gaffigan joke. Uh, I love that joke. He goes, uh, "Every country has their ketchup. Italians have marinara. Mexicans have salsa. And British food is terrible." <laughs> I love that joke. That's funny. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's got a good TV show coming out, I think. Yeah. That's something. Yeah, TV Land. Yeah. That's a plug for you there, Jimbo. I need a pick-me-up here. I'm all, I'm soured. You're oh, soured. Yeah, there's some sandpaper on my toilet. We had a meeting, a business meeting. It didn't go well. I don't know what the hell's happening. I need you to sweeten. I got to sweeten and de-sour. And uh, hey, if, you wanna, if you'd like to have a Tuesdays with Stories t-shirt, email us. Oh, please, God. Tuesdays with Stories at Gmail and let us know, because we're trying to get an assessment of how many of these things we can move. Yeah, let it, you know how you emailed in to let us know you were listening? Email in and let us know if you'll buy a goddamn shirt. And don't email in and then don't get a shirt, because you're going to fuck us financially. We need the numbers, folks. we got to get to hide their numbers. We made a bad business <laughs> move, and we need your help. Also, let us know if you're willing to pay $200. <laughs> that would help us a if lot. You're, if you're willing to pay a grand for a t-shirt... Think Let, of it as a donation. Put a, put an asterisk in there if you're willing to pay fucking 1100 bucks. These t-shirts are no joke. I thought they were cheap. I thought they were like three bucks a shirt and we charge you 30 and we make off like bandits. But, uh, boy, they want 19 bucks a whack. Yikes. And then, uh, Stand Up Labs has taken their cut and then the government takes a cut and uh -huh. then we gotta send some to Baltimore we and then, pay uh. Pay the Jews. Yeah. 
And then I got a Nepal had an earthquake. I got to send money to them, and uh, uh, I got to buy some eyeliner. My girlfriend's <laughs> pregnant. I'm gay. I don't know what's going on. I got to help the Cuba. Cuba needs money. <laughs> so Haiti. Cuba's good now. Haiti needs Haiti money. Haiti needs some dough. Haiti. They got no blankets or something. I don't uh, know. Small pox. <laughs> oh, better than big pox. Yeah, you don't want a big pox. <laughs> Tupac was good. <laughs> yeah, Shakur. Oakland and Sacktown, the Bay Area and back down. Great song, but I never liked that lyric. He says, Oakland and Sacktown, the Bay Area and back, but Oakland is the Bay Area. So he kind of repeated. Ah, uh, well, I think he's thinking of San Fran. I know, but that's the Bay Area is still Oakland, is sure. it not? No, I get it. They're still the Bay Area, right? Or no? I don't know that much about the area, but. I think it's the Bay Area, but you say San Fran. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Oakland and Sacktown, the Bay Area and back down. Mm -hmm. Soon as I'm on the scene, I'm hearing Hoochie screaming. Yeah. That video was fun. I'm excited about the new Mad Max. Folks, I'm putting it out there right now. You heard it here first. The new Mad Max will be better than the new Star Wars. Wait, wait, you're into that shit? I think the Mad Max will be fun. I was yeah. told it's the same director as the old one. It's, oh. it's Tom Hardy, that guy. Come on, Tom he's, Hardy. He's a, he's a cool cat, but it's the same director. Like, yeah. how close to the original can we get? I think he's changing it up, and now we are running out of water. We are running out of oil, so right. now it's getting a little more realistic. It's going to be fun. All right. But in the summer, you have all these shit movies, so you've got to find a couple fun ones. Yeah, you know? yeah, But the Star yeah. Wars, come on. Yeah. I don't know about that. Every that... preview looks like a Key and Peele sketch. Also, isn't there a Batman coming out or a Batman Superman? Batman versus Superman. Oh, that's, we've jumped the shark on everything. They fight now, I guess. How is that even a fight? We got, he's got superpowers. This guy's an orphan. I don't get it. That Superman movie was a piece of shit. <laughs> Real trash heap. <laughs> what? A shit movie. I'm sorry, but. That was awful. You gotta be kidding me with that thing. The only thing good about it was the, the fucking. Eye candy. That Superman was a real hunk. I disagree completely. What are you, crazy? Gays, call in. Yeah, dial in, but uh, just for a date. I don't care about what you think about Superman. I'm uh, lonely I'd, here. I'd like both. All right, well, I, I got to tell you, Greg Stone at this point before, too. Why do we need the origin? I Enough like the origin. What are you talking about? You like the origin? We know the origin. His dad is oh, super. Oh, they we know it. We the know it. The first hour. Right. The first hour of the fucking movie is Superman being born and he's on Matron. Whatever the fuck. Who gives a shit? Right. We know who Superman is. Just start out and Superman's alive. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I hear you. That's a good point. We already know it. We got it. We get it. Hey, fuck you. Hey, I'll take you a step further. On a connecting flight. Why do we need the fucking uh, safety thing again? Well, because some people are on the flight for the first time. Good point. Yeah, I mean, well, you don't need it every time. You should, but who, you don't have to listen. You just don't listen. I know. Here's I know. what we don't need. I Here's, feel bad about that. You want a rant? Give me a rant. Here I love comes a rant. a rant. The free soda. The the jig is up. The <laughs> fucking the free soda. You come through with the cart. It's bullshit. What do you mean? We don't need a free soda. All you're doing is disrupting, and people fall for it. What? They think it means something. I like a sip. The drink cart. They give you a half a can of free Coke. I can buy my own goddamn Coke. They just clog up the aisles and they distract you from sleeping. And it's the oldest trick in the book. People think they're like, we got a free soda. Yeah. Like it's part of the bargain. You pay 500 bucks right. for a flight to <laughs> Cleveland. You go, but you get a free eight ounces of soda. We don't need the soda. I'll call if I need soda. Uh-huh. They, they, you can't get to the bathroom because they're blocking the carts. Uh -huh. They're hitting your knee and your uh -huh. elbow. Uh-huh. And, and they're just, they go through it. They go, sir, would you like a soda? And I can't sleep. They're just distracting. It's such a bullshit fucking deal. Well, I, I, I see what you're saying. I agree. But I, I think they let you sleep. I think when you're sleeping, they go, thank God, one less fucking homo. I know, but uh, the, yeah. the guy next to me is ordering. He's not sleeping. Ah. Hey, eat a Coke. And then they're bumping me. My knee's sticking out. I'm very lanky. Well... I got another one. I got another rant, McNally, here. How about this? Too many announcements. Oh, of we course. We get it. Don't tamper with the fucking smoke detector. Who's who's doing that? Don't fiddle with it. Don't touch it. Don't poke it. Don't twist it. Don't it, tease it. It's horrible. The pilot should never come on. Oh, I hate the pilot. Shut up and get us there. Yes. What are you doing? It's 38 knots north by northwest. I don't know. You know, how about you not say that again? Yeah, Cary Grant. Right. I just, I don't get it. It's, it's so annoying. I'm just trying to sleep. And I ha here's another thing that's going to blow your mind. I read an article. Uh-oh. The, the, the level, the zones, the mm. boarding process is all to make money. They say the most efficient way would be you have your ticket and you just show up whenever. You get on whenever you want. 
But those zones are to make money. They want you to upgrade. They want you to become a member. They want you to be Delta. Zone 2, Zone 1. Bump up. Order early. I never fall for that shit. And it's the worst system because everyone still floods in. Zone 1, everyone just rushes in. Yes. It's only there to make money. It should be like a ball game. You have your seat. Yes. If you want to get there an hour early, you get on an hour early. You want to get on right before, you get on right before. You mean just sit on the plane? Yes. Eh, Interesting. The doors open, you know, whatever. 45 minutes before the flight. If you, you can get on whenever you want. There would yeah. be no line. It's a fucking bottleneck. Every Everybody's clamoring. To yes. Front. It's the, the worst. There'd be no line. You'd go, I'm going to show up now. I'm going to go Boy, on there. I love but it. But they set it up to make you money. Every single thing is trying to fuck us. Everything. The seats are getting smaller, and they're putting more people on the plane. But not just airlines. This The soda, the the taxes, the government, the co- these corporations. Uh-huh. They're all trying to fuck us. That's why you have to enjoy your the fun. Yeah, like, what, the Radio Shack. Why do you need my phone number? Yes. That's why you're going out of business, motherfucker. You go to Radio Shack still? I used to. Uh, all right. Let well, me ask you this. Please. We sound I, like a couple of old Jews. Good. That's what I've always wanted to strive for. How about this? Maybe I'll make some money. Uh, the planes, <sighs> you get there and they go, hey, if you're willing to give up your flight, let us know. Who's doing that? I've done that. That's amazing. What? Yeah, that's that's the best. I that's like the one good thing they do. I bought the flight because I needed to be somewhere at that time. That's yeah, but why sometimes I it. sometimes you don't. You're going home. You got nothing that night. Uh huh. And they go, you you can leave three hours from now. We'll give you two hundred bucks. And you go, fuck yeah, two hundred bucks. No, they give you a fucking voucher to Obama Pass. No, no, no. They pay you. My buddy Bart, he just got. He had a uh, what do you call it a uh, a, a layover. Uh huh. And they were like, the flight's too packed. Is anyone willing to go on a direct flight? We'll give you two hundred bucks. You got two hundred bucks and a direct flight. He said to wait a couple hours. Interesting. And his name's Bart. That's fun. Bart is fun. Yeah. Bartholomew. I think is. I think it's just a nickname. I think it's short for Bartman or something like that. Wow, that's even cooler. Yeah, it is cool. But these these planes, they really fuck. And we're flying a lot, and uh, you know, grateful to fly the chair and this. That's like one of those annoying things about that Louis bit, which I love that bit. But he's like, you're complaining because the internet's not working. You're on a chair in the sky. It's a great bit, and I love it. Yeah. But. It's like, well, yeah, but they did tell us that. And we paid $500. That was one of the things that they yeah, said we were going to have, right. and we don't have it. So, yes, we're upset that the Internet's not working because I was told that it was included. <laughs> yeah. And now you just have that money, and it's not working. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm like, I think that but's funny. But I'm like, like, some of the people go, oh, white people problems or, oh, right, first right. world problems. Yeah. But it's like, well, yeah, well, it's relative. Yeah, I'm not starving. I get it. I have a good life. But right. I was told I was going to leave at 7.30, and now I'm leaving at 8.30. Yes. So, excuse me for being perturbed. I'm sorry that I, you know, am annoyed by this. But, Can I throw yeah. this one out? Please. How about this? You get on the plane. If you're in zone three or whatever the fuck, the whole baggage thing is done. The whole up, what do you call that? The, the overhead Overhead. Space. It's all done. Why don't you just get your space <laughs> above the seat? You have. You should have your uh, your own space. Similar to underneath, Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Space. Because, because they keep cramming more seats on, so there's less space for that reason. Ah. And uh, that's one of the reasons, I think. And, and then, then people put double bags double up there, bag. they put the clothes in yeah. there, and uh, that's that very full shit. Yes. Another bullshit term to yes. scare you. Right. The flight is very full. Well, full is an absolute. Right. You can't be very full. Right. What, am I laying in the aisle? Am I in the cockpit? And they say completely full as well. Yes. It's the same full and completely full, the same thing. Full is full. Full is full. You're full of shit. Completely. Yes. All right. Anyways, that was uh, the rant portion. Ooh, boy. I can't promise it's not my rant, but that soda thing is a real thing, and that's it's a real. And people go, but I like the soda. It's like that's because you're only thinking that way. You think you they get you tricked. Yeah, I mean it's sad when that soda cart's coming. You get all, oh here it comes. What am I getting? Sprite, Coke, yeah. cranberry. Ooh. Yeah. If it wasn't that way, most people don't even like soda. They go, no. soda's bad for you. Right. Fucking diabetes. My foot fell off. Blah, 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 blah. I, you know what I do like, and I will throw this out there. I like when it's a long flight, like maybe a five or six hour, and the lady walks around with a tray of water. Well, that's nice. Randomly. I like that. That's thoughtful because people get dehydrated whatnot. Yes, yes. But there's already a system where you call, because sometimes I try to sleep at the beginning of a flight. So I'll sleep through, decide two hours later, you're like, oh, it's mine a soda. So I press the button, they bring a soda then. That's how the system should go. Well, you know what it is? They all act like cunts now, so people are scared to hit that dinger. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm terrified of the stewardess. I met some sweet ones. I think it's flight attendant. Sorry. I, it doesn't Maybe bother me. Why. Maybe that's why they hate me. Doesn't bother me, but I, you know, I like to tell people, you know, you might offend someone. I'm not offended. People will be like, oh, I went to the, I saw this Oriental guy, and I'll say Asian American, 
and they'll go, oh, oh I didn't know you. I'm like, nah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Or it call, you can call him a chink. I don't fucking care. Right, you're just helping them out. I'm letting you know someone might get hurt by sure, this. Sure, sure, I like that. It's the same thing with stewardess. I'm like, well, a, I think it's a flight attendant. They're like, well, look at you, all you liberal piece of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow, I'm a, I'm a liberal, but I don't... Right. I don't. I don't care. Stewardess, fucker. You can call her the flight cunt. I don't give a shit. But wait a minute. But you might offend. Ooh, flight cunt. That's a good name. Uh, I don't think it is. Is stewardess <laughs> offensive? I think it's just old school. It's like actress. It's an actor. They're all actors now. No more actress. What? Wouldn't actress be more appropriate? No. It's a. It's a, she's an actor. Actress is lesser. What? It's the same as comedian. Ah. Uh. He's an actor. You're an actress. It implies negativity. I just look at them equally. Actor, actress, his, her, him, her, she, I know, he. They're equal. They're actor and actor. It's like saying a firefighter and a firefighter, whatever. I just they want to be equal. It's a different word. I, I think that is equal. You're a man. You're a woman. I see your point. Husband, right. wife. Why yes. is it less? Husband, I, husband. Are we going to do that? See, again, I'm not, uh, I don't make the rules. I'm, I'm not, just, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, spreading I'm, the rules just, so people don't get hurt. I'm yelling at the sky. Yeah, you can get, you'll get tweeted at that and you'll get kicked out of show business if you say the wrong thing these Act, days. Actress seems more pro. It's like server and waiter. Now they want to be called servers. Server sounds way worse. For sure. It's just the change. People just like a change. Hey, we made a change. Right. It's not a great change, but we made one. That's well, all it is. But it's comedian as well. It's comedian, comedian and actress are out. Comedian I could see. I don't know why. But it's the same thing. I don't know why comedian is. Because people put that, they really hit that end. We've got a comedian coming up. Ooh. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. But actress, to me, it's just an actress. That's a male man. That's a male woman. I think it's male, per, no, letter carrier now, I think. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's all, right? it's topsy-turvy. Wow, letter carrier. I'm a letter carrier. I've carried a letter. Have you? Yeah. I carry around a big F for fail. I don't know. I tried. Mm. I carry around uh, three letters, H, P, and V. There folks. it is. I got warts all over my asshole. They came back, everybody. Oh, yeah? No, they're gone for good. I went to Planned Parenthood. Big plug for Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Abort those kids. Fuck them. Get rid of them. Overpopulation's a problem. I'm kidding again. Don't write it. This episode, we're going to get all kinds of hate from the uh, uh, the mailmen and the actresses and the, the, and the stewardesses carriers. and the yeah. letters. Oh, boy. We're in deep trouble now. I know when people say, you see a pregnant woman, they go, she's with child. Oh, well, that's a little odd, isn't it? Oh, God. With child. I'm with, uh, I'm with a hangover here. I hope that baby grows up and murders the person that said with child. I'm with, I'm with penis over here. <laughs> You're with a, a doozy. I'm with stupid. Remember Ouch. those? No, I'm not saying I'm you. Joking. What are you, an actress? <laughs> I'm a comedian. You are. That's your uh, bio on Twitter. It is. It makes yeah. me laugh every time I see it. Oh, thanks. You want to chuckle? Go to Gary Veter's Twitter. Really? He's got the two f best pictures ever. Oh, the fun! I love his, that on the, his Twitter. The the, uh, the whole uh, social media platform to write funny stuff. He got great photos. Yeah, what, they are funny though. All it's right, real. He's got two great pictures that make me laugh every time. Funny on purpose? Yes, of course. Everything he does is funny on purpose. He's a funny no, guy. That's not true. Well, he slips and falls. I'm sure that's funny. Uh, that's Him fucking time. would be comical. I oh imagine. my god! Yeah, it's just a little chipmunk. Uh, can I tell you something? Please. You know, see what I'm doing over here? I'm squiggling. You know why I'm squiggling? Because I got a sunburn, and it's getting very itchy. Oh, yeah, that feels good to itch it. It, it, it. sucks, though. I got, earlier, Sarah rubbed a little moisturizer on my Ooh back. It felt nice. I had a big, big old boner. Yeah. But uh, I'm all itchy back here. It feels like I got a haircut. Uh-huh. The sunburn, and I just heard my buddy was telling me, Jason Canner, he's smart. He's a, he's a Jew, and he's got a cancer in his family, so he knows a lot. Did you know a sunburn is a precursor to skin cancer? Wait a minute. Cancers? Canner's got cancer. Well, he doesn't have it, but his dad's had it like 1,100 times. Wow. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, he keeps surviving. I'm a survivor. Let's go to the hospital. But you're not supposed to get sunburned. That's, that's your skin letting you know like you're on your way to cancer. Is that right? It's like, a, it's like the first step in cancer. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sunburned you, a million times. You've got to be careful. It's like you're, it's burning. Your skin is being burnt. I knew that, but I thought it was just a skin thing. No, it's bad. Bad news bears. You gotta yeah. sunblock Jeez, up. Louise. I never sunblocked. Yeah, yeah, Google it. It's real bad. You never sunblock? Never ever. I know you're Italian, but you gotta be careful because uh, you get those rays. Yeah, UV. Yeah, ultraviolet. Yes. Not to be confused with ultraviolet, like a Clockwork Orange. Ultraviolet. I never got that into Clockwork Orange. That made me feel very uneasy when they're taping a woman up and raping her. Oh, that's the whole point. It's just supposed to bring these feelings out of you. I tried to get into it. Like when I was a kid, I was like, I think I can masturbate to this, but no. uh, I couldn't do it. Oh, you mean sexually? Yes. But you like the movie? It's okay. Yeah. I, I, I never got into the movie either. Aha. Uh -huh. I liked it a little bit. Maybe I was too young or whatever. And it, the eye thing, uh, that 
too queasy. The eye was tough. I can't love a movie that I don't enjoy watching. Like Citizen Kane, I'm like, I'm sure this is great, and every, I believe everyone, but uh, it's not enjoyable to watch, so uh -huh. I don't care. It's like the, I feel the same with the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's this renowned painting. Everybody blows this woman, but I'm like, it's all right. She's a woman. She's not cool. Yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of story of why it's so great. I don't know what it is. I don't either. I like John Hart from Montreal. Yeah, That's the guy heard, with the spaghetti. I've heard he's good. Yeah, he paints with spaghetti. He cooks with paint. <laughs> he boils up uh, noodles with a big can of paint. Right, a little red can of fake marinara. That's a good way to get cancer, by the way. Can oh. of marinara. I gotta, con I gotta confess something, buddy. Is it something to do with shitting? No. Uh oh. But I just dipped my middle finger into my belly button and it came out real wet. Ah, don't smell it. Whatever you do, don't smell it. That's the worst smelling part of the body. I can't take it. Yeah. It's too much. You could take wet garbage and dirty diapers and put them in a vagina and then have the person jog 30 miles. It would smell better than the inside of a man's belly button. Yeah, that I'd be curious to smell. I'd be like, bring it over here, sister. <laughs> put that leg in my face. Yeah. But this, the belly button, if you sniff that, I'm out. Yeah, I'm not going to. I don't, I'm not a sniffer. I sniff. I saw a guy, uh, you know what's fun is you, you clean your ears out with a Q-tip and you give the Q-tip a good whiff. What? It lets you know if you're sick. You're kidding. It's like a dipstick. That sounds like a wives' tale. No, I'll, I'll Q-tip you right now and sniff it. Do you have a wife? Because it sounds like she told you that. No, no, it's not a tale by my fake wife. So what's a healthy smell and a bad smell? Healthy smell is just like, all right, that's the smell of an earwax, and a bad smell is like a soury earwax. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Now, is it just any sick? Is it skin cancer or cold? It's like a cold or, or you know, a fluish. Like a sniffle. A sniff. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we'll try after the show. I guess we should get into a story. We're 75 minutes in here. We're just ranting and raving. Yeah, what do you got? You got anything? I got some weird stuff. Well, I had uh, I was up uh, in Montreal, like I said, last week. And then I went straight from Montreal. What great city. I flew to Boston for Patriot's Day. What's that, a two-hour flight? Well, buckle up, my friend. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, buckled. So as you know, folks, I'm a survivor of the Boston uh, Marathon bombing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I go to Patriot's Day every year. That's the third Monday in April commemorating some sort of Revolutionary War bullshit, I'm sure. I have no idea. <laughs> I thought it was a national holiday, but I guess it's just in New England. No Never one ever heard, heard of it. it. Yeah, it's very bizarre. I thought for years it was this big holiday. And then I moved, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But anyways, the marathon is the longest-running uh, continual sporting event in the world, I think. No. Consecutive each yearly. It's like 127 years here. Well, I'm sure they've got some shit in Europe. No, fuck Europe. All right. Well, they have the Olympics, but it's not annually. I'll take that. Something. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it, who cares? Free soda. Anyways, so we go up there, and the Red Sox play at 11 a.m., the only professional sporting event that starts before noon. Wow. And so a lot of fun facts. So every yeah. year we go, and it's a whole ordeal, and then the, the bombing happened a couple of years ago. So now it's extra special, you know? Those guys, they bombed the thing. That was tragic, but now they made the event that much better. Uh -huh. It's more exciting. It's more emotional. And Yes. Uh, so anyways, I went there. I had to go there, and the flight from Montreal to New York is like 160 bucks. I love it. For some reason, a direct flight from Montreal to Boston, $880. Isn't that a wacky, weird time? Again, they're just fucking you. Yeah. They want you to buy that round trip. It's, it's all such nonsense, these, these companies. So anyway, so I had to buy a ticket to JFK, lay over for four hours <laughs> to go to Boston. That's brutal. So I wake up at 9 a.m. in Montreal. I fly for 90 minutes to New York. Then I have a four-hour layover in my home city. You could have driven to Boston by then. Easily. Yeah. It was like an 11-hour travel day ah! to go from B Montreal to Boston, which is about a seven-hour car ride. Yeah. And then you're laid over in your own hometown. And you can't really go home because you got to come right back. It's a $50 cab ride. I'm going to uh, spend 100 bucks round trip to just go sit in my apartment and jerk uh, off. That is infuriating. I can just jerk off at the terminal. So yeah. That's what I did multiple times. Ooh, au pain. I went to each terminal. I went to there's JetBlue. There's some for you. Jet Goo, I called it. Yeah. Yeah, I went to American Airlines. Here's your AA, you cunt. <laughs> uh, so... Anyway, so I have a four-hour layover at JFK. I'm just walking around, and I make phone calls. But And here's the thing. Sometimes I'm like, let me catch up with people. I'll make mm -hmm. some phone calls. But here's the thing. It's Sunday afternoon. They're not sitting at the airport. Uh -huh. So I'm like, let me call Derek. I'll catch up with him. And he's, I can hear his baby crying and his wife's moaning and you know his buddy's painting the house. He's like, ah, what are you doing? I'm 
planting rose bushes. I'll call you later. I'm like, all, all right, right yeah. so he's gone. He's a family man. So let me call my mother. And she's, you know, half in the bag. I don't know. She's right, watching. Right, She's at an orgy. Yeah, she's having a big orgy. My dad has a mustache. Oh, yeah. So then she hangs it. So I go, all right, let me try Tom. I call Tom, and he's like, what are you doing? I just woke up. It's whatever. So I'm like, fuck me. All right. Thanks for calling, Yeah. by the way. So I just stroll around the airport. I'm just walking up and down, back and forth. I jerk off. And then I, I want to watch the game, but I can't. So I'm, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I got a four-hour layover. Then I get on the flight to Boston, which is like a 50-minute flight. Uh-huh. Then I get there, and uh, I call my parents. I'm like, hey, you guys coming to pick me up? But they've been drinking all day, so they don't want to come to the city to pick me up because ah. they're having a little party. So they're like, take the shuttle to Braintree. So now I woke up in Montreal in Canada. I take Oof. a cab to the airport, go through customs, so that airport for an hour, because I got there early, because I thought it was an international flight. You got to get there early, yada, right, yada, yada. Right. So I'm at that airport for an hour. Then I fly to New York. I'm at that airport for four hours. Then I get to Boston. I missed the shuttle by two minutes. Ah, it runs every half hour. Ah, so now I'm at my third airport, and I got to sit there for a half hour. Ah, I hate it. So I spent one hour there, four hours here, now a half hour here. So I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm mad at my dad. I'm like, why don't you just drive the extra 20 minutes and pick me up, for God's sake? Right, right. Then I get on the shuttle. The, uh, what's it called? Mass flight, whatever bullshit. It drives you to Braintree Mass. Uh huh. And here's this guy on the shuttle, and, uh, he's lit texting with the sound on. Uh -huh. And he's got that text that goes, <laughs> whatever the whistle uh, thing is. I can't yeah. remember how it goes. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 it keeps going off like five times. And finally I go, can you put that on vibrate? <laughs> and everyone looks at me like I'm a psycho. Yeah. But if you're, if you're looking at your phone, which he is, you don't need it on sound at all. No. You can see the text pop up. Right. Like pop-up video. That bullshit. Now, are you visible to the man? Does I'm he, visible to the man. Does he look at you? He looks. And he, he's just sitting diagonally behind me. And I go, can we put that on vibrate? And these two people are looking like they're scared. And I, I, I never want to bring race into it, but he's a black guy. And uh -huh. so everyone, the white people are like, what are you doing? Right, you can't do right. that. And I'm like, I, well, I'm sorry. You can't talk to him like he's a human being. I, I, I get nervous. I think they... they they're racist. They think he got that's, gonna, a, that's what I'm saying. They think he's gonna shoot me or something. You're treating him the way you would treat anyone else. Yes, but I, I wish it was a girl because I would feel much better with it if it was like a young teenage girl. Because you'd be, be like, nice. "Hey, shut up, you bitch," or whatever. Like an Asian girl, very submissive. Uh huh. She would say sorry and bow. Right. That but, would be nice. So this, he, he just looks, but he keeps texting. So I put, I was like, I gotta be the bigger man here. I put music in and just blast that. But uh, very annoying, these text messages. The people that text, I tweeted about it. The, if you text with the sound on, you're an asshole. Totally. Just You're just an asshole. And it's unnecessary. Everybody on this bus has to hear... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> All day. So anyways, sorry, long story longer... I finally get home, go to the parents. We watch hockey all night. My whole family's over there, my sister, my cousins, my uncle. We watch the hockey games. We're loving it. We're all yucking it up. Jason Cantor and Bart, they come over. Oh. They all come up. Bart flies in from Columbus. Whoa. Cantor comes up. We go to Patriots Day. We wake up at 8 in the morning. They start Ooh drinking 8 in the morning. I'm, I'm eating oatmeal. I'm making a smoothie. We get on the train. We yuck it up. My father, oh, he we didn't get on the train. My father drove us into the city. Thank God Dad picked up a car key. Yeah, drives us to the city, drops us off at the Fens. We get our ticket. We go to the bar beforehand. We're, we're pre-game, and I don't drink, but I yuck it up. We laugh. Yeah. My old pal Tom Dustin comes out. Hey! And he doesn't always come out. Not, and, uh, not in the morning, that's for sure. No, at 10 in the morning, he comes out, spends a few bucks. My buddy Ryan Cott was there, and... We had a big time, and it's a real, it's like a festival. It's a festivity, you know? It's real wild. It's exciting. Everyone's in great spirits. But this particular day, rainy and cold. I saw the photos. Yes. Normally, it's like a beautiful day, hopefully, but it's freezing. It's raining. And we're going, you know, we, that thing where everyone's like, fuck, it's going to be rainy and cold. And we say, fuck it. I gave a speech, like a Rudy speech. Yeah. I was like, we bought the tickets. We're bundled up. We got the long johns. We got rain jackets. Let's live Let's yes. enjoy it. And they're drinking. Yes, they're drinking. That warms you up. So we go to the game, and uh, the third inning, it starts pouring. And so we're all underneath the bleachers. We're getting hot dogs and burgers. They're getting beers. And they're like, what do we do? What should we do? Should we go to the bar? Should we watch on TV? And I go, fuck it. You can't get wetter than wet. Ah. That old adage. I like that don't, adage. Don't you love an adage? I love a subtractage as well. Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> so we, we get bundled up. We go out there, and now the ballpark is like empty because it's pouring. Yes. Everyone just goes to the bar. So we're sitting front row. And at Fenway, you can really heckle, you know? The center oh, fielder, I'm like going, that. hey, nice ass, you fucking douchebag. Yeah. And he's turning around. I was like, I almost wore the same socks, but I remembered how stupid they are, you fucking dick. And everyone's like, yeah. We're laughing. And 
Yeah, give them hell. But then in between innings, they play all the rain songs. Who and I wonder who was... And everyone's singing. Oh, the whole ballpark yeah. singing these rain songs, it's which is a blast. Men. Yes, they played that one. We they took did? our pants off. Yeah. Oh, wow. So so there's a couple uh, diehards still there. Yeah, there's probably like... The ballpark holds about 35,000. There's probably like 8,000 in the ballpark. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so we could move around. Elbow room. We're getting... It's raining on us. We're wet. But like I said, once you're wet, you go, fuck it, we're wet. You're wet, you're wet. So then we go, let's go down to behind the home plate. If the ballpark's empty, we can get down there. So as we go underneath, we're walking around the ballpark. Underneath, we come up, tarps on the field, rain delay. Ah. They got a two-hour rain delay, and I'm like, let's stick it out, because once everyone's gone, they'll start the game again. We'll be the only ones here. It'll be amazing. We wait two hours. Boy, you really took the lead here. Oh, I'm a leader. Yeah. I, a two-liter, bottle of Coke. So yes. uh, finally, they call the game, so we're like, Fuck. But at one point, two hours in, it's me and Bart and Jason and Tom. Ryan had to leave. The guys come out. They take the tarp off the field. So we thought they were starting over again. And we go crazy. We're jumping up and down. We're going, yeah! We're chanting, let them play. We're going crazy. We're throwing water on each other. And wow. It's a snowball fight. We take our dicks out. It was crazy. Woo! We're like, it's starting off. I can't believe it. At this point, there's like 300 people left in the ballpark. Wow. Literally. I got some pictures. I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. Pretty wild. But then uh, it was a big tease. Ah. They took the tarp off, they threw extra dirt on the field, and they put the tarp back on. Ah. And Canner was a little drunk, so he's like, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you, you... Hey, tarped assholes! Yeah. Fuck off! And then uh, we, had a, we had an incident, a slight incident. Mm -hmm. One of the, the tarp guys uh -oh. is a black guy with dreads, he's uh -huh. wearing a Red Sox hat, and he go, and, and Canner goes, hey, Manny! Like a reference to Manny Ramirez. Uh -huh. And uh, his buddy, he doesn't seem to mind, but his buddy, a white kid, goes... You hear that, man? He's like, that's fucking racist. Oh, this guy's fucking racist. Oh, boy. Now, what's your policy on that? You really want to know? Yes. It bothers me. If he would have said, if you would have said, hey, Johnny Damon to a white haired, long haired guy, no contest. I, Fine. I don't understand the, he looks like this person, that's racist. Yeah. Thing. I don't I, get it. I can't stand when people go, we don't all look alike. Well, some people look alike. Right. Some white people look like other white people. Some black people look like other black people. Why is that so? I'm not saying you look like James Brown or Obama or Oprah. You look like that other guy. Right. Who it's, you look like. It's one thing if you're like, all black people look the same. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Or all people, all black people act the same is certainly racist. Right. Also crazy. But to go, hey, Manny, and the guy's got fucking long black dreads and he's black and he's wearing a red sox, red sox hat, hat and he's on the field at fenway yes it's pretty funny and who's this guy starting shit and he goes ah oh, that's racist and, but he's just trying to get on this guy's that's good all, side that's all it is it was very annoying and then it, jason wouldn't let it go he was pissed he's like fuck that guy i hate he, then he hates that guy he goes under i, a I hate that dive. guy too well it's so annoying like why why is that right i don't understand that it's that's just, racist it's just point the guy wants points brownie points but that's probably racist doesn't but, race it and i could be ignorant here as god knows we're ignorant towards race we've been called that but whatever sure but doesn't racism imply some sort of negativity H hatred, hatred or yes, dislike i know isn't that hey why'd you hire him that black guy wouldn't that would be racist yes not hey you look like manny ramirez well that word is just being tossed around the word has no teeth anymore because it, we just use it all the time like when people when you go like oh, i saw this guy on the bus he was like hey man get out of my seat and people go whoa that's racist i'm like well you don't even know what race it is and that's what he sounded like. Right. <laughs> what You're racist. Yeah. That voice is black, I guess. I don't know what it was. I just threw one out. But you That's know what, what I'm saying. saying. That's what they're saying. Right, 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 right. Uh, but anyway, so that was, do it for everything. that was an incident. I feel like I'm eating up too much time here. You, no, you go stuff. and I'll I'm, go back. I'm chiming. I'm chiming in. Oh, good chimes. I love a wind chime. Chimes of freedom. Yeah. So then uh, we leave there. My, we meet up with my parents. They came in. Last year, my dad met up with us. And he had such a great time. He, he convinced my mother. He's like, you got to come, wow. Deb. My dad's getting older, so he's trying to really live. I've noticed he's living. Yeah. You, you, does he call you? A little. He never calls me. He's texting. All right. That's not bad. I'll take it. Dick pics? Mostly. So uh, he comes in with my mother. We're all bundled up, and it's pouring rain, but my mother's out there, so it, it becomes festive, and they haven't seen Tom. It's a real festive atmosphere. It's, it's still pouring. Yes. It's pour It's Bart. It's, it's Cantor. It's me. It's Tom, my parents, and we're just having a great old time. We're all bundled up and wet. We go into the bar for a while. They all have some cocktails. And I go, let's go watch the runners. Come on, everybody. I go, gather around. So we go down there. We watch the runners. We're high-fiving. You cheer. you got to come to this event sometime. All right. Because it's strangers rooting for strangers. There's no other thing there. You know what I mean? You're not trying to further your career. Right. Or you're just 
rooting on other people. Like, yes. come on, you're almost there. One yeah. mile. I love it. Get your dreams. Go get them. Get it. Yeah. It's so exciting to have people just rooting for each yes, other. Yes, yes. With no vanity or show business, you're just going, come on. It's human. It's beautiful. It's, it's emotional. A, it's a beautiful exper- experience, and I highly recommend it. And uh, come to the marathon, third uh, Monday in April. Come next year and uh, tweet at me or text me. We'll meet up. We'll all hang out. Oh, nice. We'll all run. Come to the ball game. It's fun. And so then we went back inside. We went to Uno's. We sat down. We had a big wet dinner. Yeah. Pat- Isn't it fun when everybody's going through the same thing? Ah, it's beautiful. Everybody's wet. Yes. Our pussies, our assholes, and uh, it was just a great, great day. Boy, that sounds amazing. Yeah, Patriots Day. Come out, everybody. Sometimes the bad thing can be the the best part about it. Like most people go, it's raining. Fuck it. But that could be what brings it, makes it great. It bond. It's like nine eleven. It those, bonds. Those weeks after nine eleven, it sounds weird, but you look back and like that was a great time. Of course, it was wonderful. George Bush throwing the strike. Yes. I loved him. At, I was like, this guy's amazing. Of course, put, like a, a week later, I was like, what a piece of shit. Well, yeah. Everybody put flags on their porch and everything. It was huge. It was a bonding. The flags. Everyone loved each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after Katrina, New Orleans was was amazing. Yeah, it needed a bath. Yes. Boy, it was, uh, it's really fun when everyone comes together and, uh, it was, it was just, it was a beautiful, beautiful time. And it is every year. I say the same thing every year. Yeah. So anyways, you got any beauty over there? I got some, some cutesies. Mm. Uh, just at a bunch of shows in LA, I hung out with John again and Sean Patton at the improv one night. Dave Attell shows up, <whistles> does a set, and they're like, Attell's here because he never goes to LA. So they're like freaking out. So they, all the comics run in. I was hitting on a gal, so I didn't have to go in. Uh, then Dave does his set, walks out, and he goes, hey, Norman, and then left. So that was kind of a cool moment. Yeah, that, it always feels good when someone sees you getting recognized by someone famous. Yeah, yeah, but she didn't know who he was. So right. What are you going to do? If you do. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, did that True TV shoot, did a show at the Lyric, which was amazing. Kyle Kinane, I had to follow him. He is so good. Yeah. Check this kid out, Kyle Kinane. He's amazing. Great comic. He's he's going to be huge. He does the voice for Comedy Central. You've heard him on every every second of Comedy Central. He's like, Next up, workaholics. Arr. Right. Yeah, that's him. Uh, yeah, then uh, flew to Vegas, got room service. I love when you check into Vegas and they go, it's like an hour, half flight, just like Montreal. Mm-hmm. And I check into the hotel at the Cosmo, and they go, all right, your room's blah, 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 and here's your food voucher. I go, ah! I, I secretly jizz inside. Yeah. And I love a food voucher. So I got right up to that room, and I got on the horn, and I said, hey, I'll have the uh, linguine, a tortilla soup, and an iced tea. They wheel that cart in. I'm naked, dancing, so I don't have to tip because they run in, they run out. Right. And, uh, yeah, boy, I really devoured that like a real fat kingpin. I'm just sitting in my room in underwear, you know, with a turkey leg and a beer in one hand, and I got, you know, VH1 on. You know, it's crazy. Those kings love VH1. Yeah, yeah, you know, Lear. They like the pop-up video. Yeah, pop-up video. Great show. That was good. I think I nailed that. I think you nailed that pop. They probably think we did that in post. That was not post, folks. No, no. He used to work for a VH1. That was uh, pre. Yeah. So uh, we do the show at the Cosmo. Tough, tough crowd. Vegas, baby. Cosmo. This is like young, drunk, crazy Vegas kids coming mm-hmm. out to see Schumer. 3,000 people. Uh, I go out there. And Schumer's doing this thing now. She's so big where she'll just fly in. Shows at 8. She'll fly in, get to the airport at 740. And uh, just drive right to the gig and go on. Wow. I mean, because she's like, well, he'll do 25, so that buys me another 25 minutes. He'll probably start five minutes late. So she's doing, she wants to be at that theater as little time as possible. Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm on stage. She's not even at the, in the building yet. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> so uh, so uh, I do my set. I, I don't have a great set. I'm like looking for closers. Like, that was my closer. Didn't hit that hard. What's another closer? Right. You know that? Well, you're searching for a. a, a a big pop to get off. Of course. I never get it. And I just go, all right, I've been uh, Mark Norman. They're like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I both, I look over the sound guy, I give him like the, is she here? And he gives me the thumbs up. And I go, all right, everybody. And I got my big intro. Boo, Amy Schumer. The whole place stands up. 3,000 people lift up. Wow. Standing ovation. She comes out. The music. It's like this big hip hop. Bop, bop, bop. She comes out. Ah, they're going crazy. She's got a bottle of wine in one hand, you know, it's waving in the other hand. She's a star. She's, She's like a, Eddie Vedder. Yeah, high heels on, just walking out. She does like the sit down, sit down. Oh my god, blah blah blah. Then she does her hour, killer hour. Oh my god. And I go back to the green room, and I, 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 uh, I got a maker's mark on my rider. It's the bottle. Wow. So I make a cocktail, 
And I go out and I watch. I watch the show. I take some photos. It was amazing. It was a, it was a real moment. Now, you were doing clubs with her at one point. Yes, to, to 12 people. It's amazing. And uh, also, if it's got, your job becomes more difficult because I think the bigger she gets, the more they want to see her. The more the anticipation. They go and yeah. fuck this guy. The more they hate me. In the beginning, it was like, oh, there's two comics. Right. Now it's nobody and a megastar that we paid to see. Yeah, they're checking their watches now going, hey, what the fuck is, who's this asshole? I'm so glad you said that because I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to seem like I was making an excuse. Right, right. All right, but yeah, yeah. We, we got to do a little mid-roll. Yeah. Speaking of mid-rolls, boy, I got to go on a diet. I like a California roll myself. I like a California raisin. I don't know why I said that. I hated those guys. I never uh, got it. Yeah, I never got it either. Yeah, the raisins that sing. What, what did they start as? Was it a commercial or is it a band? What the fuck was it? I think was it was it? a commercial. Because then it, it's a product, the California Raisins. Yeah. Yes. But then they took off. They became like a real thing, and I hated it. I didn't get it. It was their commercial. It was the California Raisins, and then they made the Raisin Band. Yes. 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 It was stupid. It's all, all a gimmick. I think there was no dum, entertainment dum, 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 in the 70s. Yeah. I think that was 80s. Well, either way. Yeah. So Harry's.com, people. Hell of a razor, I got to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, started by two guys who wanted a better shaving experience, and God bless them. They're doing the Lord's work. Because Lord knows that's a high quality apparatus you got there. Uh, yeah, they deliver a superior shave. Uh, bought a blade factory in Germany. <whistles> Germany is a good place to buy a blade factory. You don't want to buy one from Detroit. Yeah. You know, or Bosnia. Mm -hmm. So good on them for going with the big germ. Uh, yeah, this, their starter kit starts at 15 bones. That includes a razor, three blades, a choice of hairy shave cream and foaming or foaming gel. Your choice. And uh, as an added bonus, you can get five bucks off your first purchase with my code. Our code. Yes. Tuesdays, people. Tuesday. After using my code, you can get an entire month's worth of shaving for just 10 bones. Wow. Shipping is always free, by the way. So go to harrys.com now, and Harry's will give you $5 off if you type in our code TUESDAY with your first purchase. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com, and enter coupon code TUESDAY at checkout for 5 bucks off the starter set, and start shaving smarter today! Wow, that was a hell of a read! I picture when I read those that everybody at Harry Shave has just got their hand on their forehead. Yeah. Uh, their cleanly them. shaven forehead, I might add. Yeah, you gotta shave that forehead. Yeah. I got a huge forehead. You gotta drive in theater there, buddy. Yeah, it's a big one. You got a billboard. But I'll tell you this, I'll take a big forehead over one of those little foreheads. I hate the little, the little's way worse. You ever see those people? Their hairline starts at their eyebrow. Yes. It's odd. My hairline and eyebrows look like they're getting in a fight, and my forehead's breaking it up. Yeah. That was a bit of mine from 06. That's never, a great bit. Never worked. I love it. Oh, it stinks. I gotta, you gotta bring that back. I gotta bring it back. Please. I just brought it back. I brought it here. Tweet in if you uh, liked that bit. I grew up with a guy, Everett. You ever met an Everett? No, but I lived in the city of Everett, oh, Massachusetts. That's right. I, I met a, I knew a guy named Everett. No forehead, nothing. Yeah, it's weird. When he when he thought, you know, when he was confused, his his hairline hit his eyeball. Wow, interesting. Yeah. We'll have to talk off air. I can name names. Some people with tiny foreheads. All right, but sometimes you see a girl, and I, I don't care for that either. Christina Ricci, whopper. She's big forehead, huge. Boy, she's sexy though. She is sexy. You ever see anything big, else? The wooden big eyes. Oh, when she was walk around in the panties. The panties. Oh, of course I remember that. Wow, boy, she's hot. And I, I liked Rizzo in that movie too. I'd fuck her too. She was all right. Stalker Channing. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe I pulled that out of my ass. Yeah, you did a good job. Anything else is underrated. I love that movie. That was good. Jimmy Fallon's in that. Jimmy Fallon was terrific. Yeah. Back yeah. then, I liked Jimmy Fallon. I don't dislike him now. I don't like him. Well, I'd love to do the show. I'd love to do it too. And I love UCB. Yeah. And Jimmy Fallon. And uh, everybody else. I love everything and everybody. And I like that free soda on the airplane, everybody. I'm scared we're going to get assassinated by the Illuminati. Oh, no. That... What the hell is the Illuminati? Can you tell me that? I think it's rich people. I think it's supposed to be some sort of group that runs yeah. the whole planet or something. Hillary Clinton, I think, is in it. I think a lot of people are in it. No kidding. Yeah, they have good parties, and they all, they're all millionaires and whatever. But not too many people. I don't know anything no, about it. it's but... very... Um... Illuminati. What's the word? Exclusive. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Nice. Yeah, so uh, Vegas got off stage, had some Maker's Mark. We all go back to Schumer's uh, room. She's got all the whole crew, their sister there, the road manager. We're drinking. We do room service. We get steaks. <laughs> we get steaks. We go all out. You know, she orders a ton of sides. We're watching the White House Correspondence Dinner. That already happened? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. It was Friday night, I believe. No kidding. Yeah, and Sicily Strong did a whole thing. I think it's Sicily. Sicily. Yeah. Sicily is the island that uh, the Italy is kicking, the boot. That's uh, where my people are from, Sicily. Yeah. Mine too. Hey, is that right? Yeah. Paisan! Whatever that means. Wow. So, uh. Hell of a slice of pizza in Sicily. Not bad. Yeah. Grandma slice. What's that? It means we're countrymen. Oh, it means we're countrymen. No All kidding. Right. Wow. Interesting. I'm going to just start yelling that around the, around the town square. So, uh. We don't we got, have a town square. I could find a square. We have a Times Square. No Times Square. We had a Union Square. Yes. A lot of squares. Herald Square. Herald Square. Madison Square Park. Yeah. Hip to be square. Huey Lewis. Yeah, be, and the news. Be there, be square. Yep. All right, so uh, we eat, we're eating the steaks, and it was so cool. It's like, did you did you? I guess you didn't watch it, but it's uh, key. What's that guy? Keynote. Name? Keegan Peel, not key. Uh, key and oh, Peel. Key and Peel. But, Michael Key. Michael Key and uh, Jeremy Peel. I'll give you. I think Jordan. Is it really? I think it is Jordan. Oh wow! But one uh, of them dates Chelsea Peretti. Yeah, boy, I'm jealous of that. Mm-hmm. You love Chelsea Peretti. Oh, what a what a fucking mug on her. <laughs> I love that mug. She's good all, luck. she looks like a Picasso in a good way. It's all distorted. <laughs> Everything's fucked up, but it works. You know what I like about you? You use mug in a positive way. Yeah, you never hear that. I like mug. You always hear mug is negative. He's got a hell of a mug. This guy's got a shitty mug, but oh. you say good mug. I think to me, just mug is face. Right. Yeah. So you're changing the rules here. I like it. See, I think I'd get in trouble with racial stuff for that. That's interesting you bring that up because I'll say, this guy does this, and they go, like you say, this place is lousy with Mexicans. And people go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, well, that doesn't mean bad. It just means there's a lot of them. Lousy with Mexicans? I never heard of that saying. You never heard of loud? That? that place is lousy with cookies. I think you're thinking loud. No, no, no. <laughs> That's I never heard this in my life. You never you've heard lousy? I had a conversation about it the other day that I was lousy with something and everybody was confused. Yes. Like, what do you mean it's bad? I was like, no, it just means I have a lot of them. Yes. No, no it's, kidding. It's an All old right. phrase. I'm trying to bring it back. I'll start using it. Yeah, yeah. I'm lousy with HPV. Yeah, you are. Yeah. This, the walls are lousy with graffiti here. No kidding. All right. So, uh, so anyways, we're eating steaks. Peel. We're eating steaks. Key, Michael Key is doing a thing with Obama. It was hilarious. I've just, seen the sketch they like did. A sketch. It was really cool. Just seeing the president doing comedy was crazy. He's being the straight man. And then Cecily. Yeah, I think so. Cecily goes up and does this whole, uh, Whole thing with, uh, shit, what the hell does that say? Uh, she does a whole thing with, uh, with women's rights and like, she had a great joke. She had a couple, she had like a, she had like a 20 minute set. It was wild. Yeah. And it was cutting and biting. And we're just watching that and it felt so cool being in Vegas in a nice hotel room eating a steak and Schumer is watching us laughing and I was like, Boy, we are really in comedy. Yeah. We are in the business. She knows them. You know, she's tweeting at Cecily. Hey, all right. Boy, that sounds great. Oh, it was wild. Then uh, the next day. So then we, we drank our faces off in her hotel room, and she can't really go out and stuff. Who so can't? Schumer. Oh. She'll get, you know, bombarded. Mobbed. Yes. So uh, we, we start drinking whiskey. We're having a great time. Now it's like 2 in the morning, and, and they're like, we're going to bed. Get out of our room. And I'm like, great. So I just start hitting the nightclubs alone in Vegas. Wow. And I'm just like, uh, hey, see, we got the show. We got the show. I get shot down left and right, and uh, I just go back to my room. I had, a, I had a real shot down. I saw this. This It was a guy and two girls. So I was like, you know, in your drunk mind, you're like, hey, one for me, one for him. Right. But they were friends with him. And uh, I'm standing next to this girl, real creepy-like. I'm, I'm pretty much hammered here and this one girl walks by and goes hey you were great tonight but she was holding hands with a guy and i was like oh thank you and i looked down to see if the girl heard who i was creeping on uh-huh and she uh she wasn't looking at me and i tap her i go you hear what that girl said and oh. she goes no i didn't hear what that fucking girl said and oh I was my like, god okay time for me to go home and i went home yikes yeah i, I mean the, the the desperation kicks in hard when you're boozing like that. Yeah. And the the clock's ticking, you know? Yeah, I, I remember those days. Yeah, and I, you have no game left. Your tank's empty. You got nothing. Right. That desperation got me in some trouble. Oh, yeah. It's like, this is like a callback to the HPV. But, uh, of course. I had no game to begin with, though. So I had no game, and I would get desperate, and then it would be a whole thing. Right. Like, Come on, please, fuck me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, next morning, Saturday morning, we fly to Reno. I want to go to Reno. Yeah, and uh, boy, that town is sad. Yeah, they say that. I've never been there. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like Vegas is, you know, retarded brother. It, it's it, there's slot machines everywhere, but they don't have the energy. It doesn't have the vibe. 
Doesn't have that Rat Pack thing. Yeah, it's uh, ugh. it's just it's Reno's just like a foot. You know, it stinks and no one likes it. But I like a foot. I like, like a good a foot? foot, though. This is a bad foot. It's a bad foot. It's, a, a, it's a hoof. It's a, a, hoof, a wet hoof. Yeah. Oh, gross. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of bunions on there. Yeah, so we had a we had a little tiff with the, uh, the event coordinator at this show, and Schumer went off on the hotel. It was pretty great. And then uh, I was hungover all day. One of those epic hangovers. I, I Our flight was at 3, and I couldn't get it together even by 3. I was so hungover. Oh, man. Yeah. Ordered, uh, ordered room service again. Got the huevos rancheros, and I got a bloody mary, and I was still hungover. Ah, yes. Yeah. Do you have that thing? I know, I know you don't drink, but when you were hungover, do you remember when I'm hungover and I have something to do? My anxiety is insane. It's through the roof. Yeah. Well, you you got poison coursing through your veins. Yes. You know what I mean. You're you're dumping poison into yourself, and it's it's a depressant alcohol. Yes. So you're 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 just your heart is just pumping depressants, and that makes you anxious and. Uh, and that's why I quit. It was so much anxiety all the time. Yeah. I hated it. And then no sleep, which also cranks up your anxiety because you don't get quality sleep when you're drinking. Right, right. You can't sleep right. People think that it helps. You fall asleep quicker, but you don't sleep right. Yes, so, yes. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, tough. Definitely the anxiety is definitely cranked up. Especially when you're like, I'm working with a big star here. i got to kind of get my act together. Right. And, uh, yeah, so I was just like, ah, all I can think about is 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock. That's when your car's picking you up, and you got to meet Schumer. 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Uh, and I I sucked it up, and it, it worked out. But, boy, it was tough. Right. you got to get your literal act together. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, went to Reno, flew there, did the show, and uh, drank after with Schumer. And, you know, Theo Vaughn? Yeah, I know Theo Vaughn. I don't, I don't, I don't, I know, I've never met him. I don't know why I said that. Old but I know friends with Schumer, yeah. He was on uh, MTV Cribs. Road Rules. Road Rules, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, we all hung out in Schumer's room, watched some TV, and then uh, flew back to New York City. Got home at 11 p.m., which is a real bummer. Yeah. Well, especially for you, because you can't do a spot. Yeah, yeah, but I just hate... I lost... Uh, the whole day is gone. Yeah. I hate that. I uh, Great to be back. I had the, my return trip from, from Boston at the Patriots Day. We took the Bolt bus, uh -huh. me and, uh, and Bart and Jason Canner... And uh, I had a show at Caroline's at uh, 7.30. Uh-huh. Or so I thought. Uh-oh. Get the email. So I book a 1.30 bus. So I think, uh, you know, four and a half hours or so. I get in at five, run home, drop off my lug, and then go back to Caroline's. Mm -hmm. I get the email saying, hey, show, you're up first. It's a 7 o'clock show, so your spot time is 7.10. And I uh -huh. go, well, I thought it was 7.30, so I just lost a half hour. Yeah. Then the bus hits the traffic, the mucho trafico. Mm -hmm. One thirty bus leaves at one forty. We hit all the traffic, and then this particular bus drops you off at Thirty Ninth Street and Second Avenue, uh -huh. which is way over there. There is no First Avenue at that point, so you're just there's this water. I can see Queens. I can see my house. Oh, weird. So you're way the fuck over there, and I get in at seven fifty. I mean, uh, like six forty five for the uh, seven o'clock show. Uh -huh. And I've been sitting on a bus for six hours. Jesus. So I'm like, I'm just gonna hoof it. I'm just gonna walk to Caroline's, which is ten blocks up and about five blocks over. How much time we got? About eighteen minutes, seventeen Ooh, minutes. That's cutting it. So I Google map it, it says like twenty one minute walk, and I was like, Well I'll cut time, no goodbyes with Bart and Cat. I just go, see you later. Fuck yeah. you guys. But I have my roll away bag and my backpack. So I got luggage. I've been in Montreal oh, for three days, God. I've been in Boston for two days. I haven't showered. I've been farting all day. I masturbated twice. Can I say I'm so proud of you? I feel like two years ago, you wouldn't have been able to do this. Well, I had to do it. I just fucked up. Oh, okay. But uh, it, was, it was a very Norman moment. I wanted to yes, call you. Yes, Because I was jogging. First, I was just walking really fast. The first two blocks, you're out in East Asshole. So right. like, there's nobody out there that in helps. Manhattan. But then you start getting to Grand Central, Ugh. 5th Avenue, 6th Avenue, the 40s. Yeah. 6th Avenue and 42nd Street at 6.30 p.m. is not a pretty place no. to be carrying a bag. No, sir. And everybody box. hates you, and they're all just weaving and bobbing, so I'm picking up my bag. I had to pick up the rollaway bag and just throw it on my back, and I'm just cutting in and jiving. It was very Norman. Uh-huh. It was very exciting, and then I had to just kind of jog. Uh-huh. And I'm texting the club. I'm trying to call him with the phone in the, between the shoulder and the ear. That move, you know, yes. the secretary. Yes. And I'm carrying my bags. I finally get there. It's fun to arrive at the club. I get there right on time. I come running downstairs with my suitcase and backpack. And everyone's like, what the fuck is up with this guy? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I just got back in town. It's a whole ordeal. Vince August is hosting. He's already on stage. Wow. I run in. 
with my suitcase. The crowd is packed to bring her show. Yeah. So I get into this, the light and I just wave. I'm like, I'm here, buddy. And I'm holding a suitcase and a backpack like a hobo. Like I just moved to town or whatever. Uh-huh. Not a hobo, but a whatever. A drifter. A drifter. A nomad. Yes. Mark Nomad. Yeah. But uh, anyways, walk right on stage, do my set, have a shit set. I just eat my dick. I'm <laughs> out of breath and I just, I got nothing. And yeah. I, I fucked around. Oh, I was wearing a hat because I hadn't showered, so I was wearing my Red Sox hat, and so I was like, nice hat. And I was like, well, this is why you can't wear a hat. And I started talking about the marathon. I had no joke. I just ate a bag of cheese. Oh, wow. I haven't seen you do that in a while. Yeah, it stunk. And then I walk off stage. My suitcase and backpack are still sitting on the side of the wall there. So I just scoop them up and walk right out, get my money, and leave. Yeah, I like that. So uh, I was in there for 11 minutes. I had a nine-minute set. I was there for 11 minutes. 9-11. Yeah. Jump on the train, go back home. I have another spot at Eastville. So I go home to my house, drop off the suitcase, drop off the backpack, take off my hat, imagine that, throw water in my hair so it looks like I showered, a little splash, ah. you know, spray some uh, champagne. No, not champagne. What's the other one? Axe body spray. No. Uh, what's it called? Febreze? Flowers. No. You know, cologne. Ah. Put a little cologne on there. I didn't know you had cologne. I got a couple of colognes. Interesting. So Bartolo cologne. So I put a little cologne on. Jump right back on the train, go to Eastville. Hot show over there. I recommend you to the guy. Did he touch base with you? I'm doing it next month. He's from Montreal. Good egg. Yeah, good egg. Uh, that room gets hot. When that yes. room's hot, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. There's a lot of hot women there, too. Mm. So Santi is the guy's name. Santi. Yes. Santiago. Uh, so he's, he's a good guy, and I think he's a listener, too. So thanks for listening, buddy. Thank you, Sant. And uh, it pays good money. Yeah, but it was good. It was fun, so I had to go. Then I went home and showered and masturbated twice and all that stuff. There you go. Oh, I forgot the best part of my story. Oh, get back to it. And then we'll wrap it we up. we got to wrap up. All right. I'm, my bladder's about to erupt at any moment. Uh, night in Reno, uh, it was a rough show. I, I kind of ate it. The mic cut out on me. It was, it was one of those nights. Mm-hmm. Reno, just a shit, shit town. But it's a foot. If you're from there, you know, God loves you. Hallowed be thy name. But yeah, so uh, I kind of have a rough set. I bring Schumer up. She's in a mood, and I love watching a, a comic in a mood. Isn't that yeah. fun? Like when David tells pissed or something like that. Oh, I worked with DePaulo for years. Oh my God, he's, he's been in a mood since '89. He invented mood. Yeah, he's a peanut butter mood. Moody McCarthy. Yeah. So uh, he's a mood ring. So uh, she goes up, and one guy yells out after a few sentences. Yells out. Say something funny. Oh, wow. Classic. Classic heckle. So she's like, are you fucking kidding me? There's 4,000 people in this room. She's like, are you kidding me? Come up here. Get the fuck up here. And the, I was like, what? Ah, my head's spinning. I was like, what? This is crazy. All the security guards walk to the stage just to like keep an wow. eye on the guy. And the guy stands up. Huge motherfucker. He must have been like Samoan. This guy was giant. Wow. Big. I think he was, I think he was a... Uh, Cuban guy? I don't know. Hmm. He was a big dude. Just big fridge refrigerator dude. Perry. And he gets up and he just starts walking to the stage. She's like, hey, how about you take your time? And so he starts walking faster and he was so fat that she was like, you know what? Stop. You're shaking the room. She's just cutting the guy down oh, wow. on the walk over. And she goes, Jesus, did you cause the Nepal earthquake? Oh, wow. Place is going on. She's getting topical on him. I made that joke with my friend Derek. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then he uh, he won't come up on the stage, so she hands him the mic kind of thing like leans down and hands it to him and he's like he's like i said say something funny and she goes you're not in jail you can't talk to me like that anymore and it's mur i mean i'm, I'm butchering it but it's murdering right. it's, everybody's going nuts i mean seeing this big star chew out a, a, a nobody yeah and uh then she like she's like get the fuck back there uh, sit down she's like she's cutting him down on the way back and everything and uh so then we go back to her room after the show we all go there we order food the guy who brings the cart up the bellhop, or whatever you call him, stewardess. I uh, I open the door. Oriental. Yeah, I open the door, and he goes, "Mr. Normand," and I go, "Yeah," but I didn't order the food. Oh, so interesting. I was like, "Yeah, yeah," and he goes, "Mark Norman," and I go, "Ha, huh? I'm nervous now." Yeah, and he goes, "Oh my God, I am the sign." And I'm like, "What?" And he goes, "I am the sign." Ah, oh. he knows my bit. It's my janitor bit from 2014 or wow. 2011. And he saw me on Last Comic Standing. No kidding. He's flipping out. He's like, I'm a huge fan of the show. You should have been on longer. He brings the food in. He's like, I, I could lose my job for doing this, but will you take a picture with me? And I'm like, of course, of course. Oh, man. I take a photo. He risked his job. Wow. A job risk. And then I was for like, you. It's like, well, you know, Amy Schumer's here. He's like, sorry, right, I don't know you, Mrs. Uh, Boomer. I got to, you know, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm talking to this guy here. It was quite a moment. Wow. That's a great moment. Yeah. He's like, my wife's gonna flip out. It was, it was, it was something. Wow. Well, he must listen to the show, I assume. So I don't a big think shout he does. out. 
You what? should have told him about the show. I should have. I don't think he knew what a pod was. Yeah, you could be in his ear every week for hey. an hour. Hey, buddy, at the Valencia Hotel. Somebody, t- If you're at the Valencia and you get roommates, I yeah. mean room, what's it called? Room service. Room service. Uh, tell, uh, you know, Pablo, whatever his name is. Escobar or something. Pete, maybe. Billy, or- Jack. Oriental. I'm sure his name was Bill or Mac or Buddy. Yeah, he was a good egg. He's a nice guy, good smile, very tan. Wow. Yeah, All right. about well, five eight. Tell them about the podcast. Tell anybody about the podcast, everybody. We gotta wrap up here. Spread the word, folks. We got a we got a humdinger on our hands and it's only growing. Yes, it's growing like a boner on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those he, Sunday boners. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I get in church. Indeed. And uh June second, our friend Sam Marill will be at the Village Underground recording his new album. Come out to that. Buy a ticket. Support the arts. Support Sam. He's a he's a great Great, tall, handsome Jew with yes, great jokes. Very swarthy. You should see him shirtless. It's all pubes. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, he is He is uh, Russian. Yes. Those Russians. So uh, thanks for listening to the show. Tell a friend and uh, email us Tuesdays with Stories at Gmail. We can't always get back to everyone because we get a lot of them, but we really appreciate them. When you send a nice, thoughtful email, it really means a lot to us. Oh, I want to give a shout-out to Kim, our uh, female black fan who came to our... Live show. Oh, Kim was great. Yeah, she knows a lot about race. We might have her on. We're going to have her on, and uh, she was great, and she said she's never been offended at the show ever once. I love it. Good. Love and, you, Kim. Uh, she, was, she was sweet, so thank you, Kim. And uh, thank you, Becky, who sent me a really sweet email. And, um, yeah, we, we appreciate everybody listening and, and uh, buy everyone. A, buy a shirt for crying out loud. Yeah, <laughs> email us if you. you want a shirt. Tuesdays, yeah. it's, Tuesdays with stories at Gmail. We really fucked ourselves. I might skip town. <laughs> we're, in the, we're in the tank or whatever term. <laughs> we're swimming with we're, tanks. We're in the shit without a paddle, something yeah, like that. Something happened to I'm us. I'm going to paddle my ass later. I got herpes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thanks for listening. Tell a friend and uh, kiss your mother on the lips. We love you. Let her carry her.